going to do a KD Max demonstration. Basically, we're going to draw a kitchen from start to finish uh, using the KD Max uh, 3D design software. We'll get this started by opening up the program. Basically, once you open the program, this is what you will see. This is the first page that will open. In this page, this is where you will uh, put your kitchen layout or your room layout of where we're going to put the kitchen. I'm going to use the menu down the side here. Um, in this menu down the side it has free wall. Um, that's an option to basically draw a wall at any size, any dimension that you require. So we'll start off, we'll pick a free wall option, we'll pick the side, right side option, We'll grab the start from the left hand side and work our way around to the right. So we'll measure out. I'm going to measure out 5,000. Enter. Going to go across 2,500. Enter. Going to go up 600. Enter. Go down 5,000. Enter. Come back down 600 enter <coughs> and then go across 3000 enter basically just going to create a room when you bring the um the wall back down this way you see the crosshair will automatically line up with the crosshair on the other side that allows you to bring the wall to the exact same size then i bring it across and finish it off put my kitchen to the middle from here what I'll do is I'll add in some window openings so I'll go over to my window option change the size of my window option to 1800 2 meters is the height and I want to go 200 off the floor press OK click on the wall where I want it to be copy that again and click it on that side as well go right click to exit out Click on the window if I want to move the window and put it in the exact position. You'll see there's a red line and there's a yellow line with an arrow pointing to the direction with a measurement. On this one I want the red line to finish at 250. We go OK. On this one here I want the same position. I want the red line, the yellow line this time to finish at 250. And we go OK. <clears throat> from there you can add in other options like adding doorways so there's a single door I'll place a single door over here just like that now if you want the door to change from one side to the other you can press your spacebar you can see it's going from left to right and you can also move it so it goes an outward opening door I'm just going to leave it there like that for this one and place it just there I'll also um, place in uh, a sliding door. So we'll go a sliding door, and I'm just going to place a sliding door option down to this left hand corner here. Okay, so there's the main part of my room is finished. What I'm going to do now is add in a ceiling. So we go up to room, in our menus at the top, we go to auto ceiling, select the middle of the room, and type in the height that I want it to be. And go OK. That puts a red line in the inside measurements of our wall that indicates that we've added a ceiling. What we'll do now is um, we'll add some lighting at this point. This point basically with our lighting this is a, uh, helps you with your rendering process <coughs> when you go in to um, do your rendering of the kitchen that you're going to draw. So what we'll do is we'll add some linear lights. Linear lights is a row of lights so basically you draw a line from one side of the room to the other and this option gives you as many lights in that line as you like you go OK now you can copy that that line and go down again or you can just use your linear line option and just start your point from there to there that goes and puts in an OK so now I've got as much downlight as I need I believe and from there what we'll do is we'll go into our uh, our drawing so we click on our 3d box we'll go to comes automatically to this global style setting global style settings 
um, is where you'll set up your room defaults. Room defaults basically are your um, your door colour, your bench top colour, your bench top thickness, your kicker height, your panel colour, basic material colours, and so forth. I'll just go through the tabs um, and explain what they do. First one is uh, just a general picture. Next one is just setting up your room template, so that's just setting up the colour of the walls, the door frames, the window frames, and the colour of the flooring. I'll use this one, it's a basic one to start off with. Any of those elements can be changed when you're inside your drawing. Next one is selecting a door colour. Basically, you can select any door colour from our range by going into select. This will open up our menu. Inside the menu, there will be our colours. So we've got a colour selection from Laminex, Polytech, Wilson Art, Formica. Main, main, main players that are out there in the market at the moment. Okay. So I'm going to pick a, a bright colour. I'm going to go China Blue. And we go OK. So that allows me that my door colour now is to be selected as uh, Laminex China Blue. We go to our next tab. This is where we select our handle. Our handles are selected by going into select. Go find the handle that you want. Pick on the handle that you require. As you can see, there's quite an extensive range of handles in the system. Okay, so I'll use the one that I want, and I can change the size of the handle to whatever I like as well. So I'll just change it to 150. Then we go OK. So I just want to match it to that one, match it to that one, and match it to that one. If you want a vertical handle, you just untick the box here at horizontal, there, and there. Okay, go to the next tab. The next tab is this is where you set the thickness of your bench top as well as the overhangs of your bench top. So I'm going to do a 40mm stone thick top. Um, I'm going to have a 20mm overhang over the face of my doors and I'm going to have a 16mm hang overhang over the ends of my end panels. We go to our next tab. And next tab gives you the option to set up your kicker heights. So mine are set up at 150mm. 30 millimeters in from the face of my doors and uh, that's they're flush to the ends of my carcasses because I'm going to run my panels to the floor. We go to the next tab. Next tab is where you set up the color of the main materials on your job. So um, your worktop colors, your end panels, your kicker faces and so forth. So I'll go through my worktop ones. I want to change the color so I want to select material. I want to use Caesar Stone Classico. I'll use a nice dark colour, so we'll use a thing called uh, Jet Black. We go OK. Now I'm going to copy the material to there and to there. And go OK. Wall, and pa wall shelves, end panels are all matched to the same colour as my doors. Kicker faces, I want to actually select new material for that. Go to unit, kicker face material. I want to use a brushed aluminium style. Okay, corners, pelmet, door cover, I want to match to the door. Top panel, which is your overhead ceiling filler, which is your bulkhead, are all matched to the doors. Your internal material is 16mm um, HMR white. Your carcass material, external carcass material, is uh, the same colour as the doors and so forth. From there, you go to the last tab, which is others. In this tab, basically, you just need to use this measurement here. This measurement allows you, for when you're bringing in an overhead cabinet, it will automatically put, in, put it in off the floor at that measurement, which is 1560. So I'll work that out to be as a 910 base cabinet and a, five, and a 650 opening. From there, what we do is then we go OK. At that point there, it takes you into your 3D straight to where your cupboards are. The kitchen's going to go. You can move around the, the room navigating just with the left click on your mouse, holding it down and moving the mouse around. That allows you to move around and around. As you can see, 
You can also navigate in the kitchen in the area by using this option down in the bottom right hand corner which as soon as you get into it it turns into a camera. That camera will you point that camera in any direction and it will face you to where it needs to go. Okay so I'm going to point it to there point it into that corner because that's where I'm going to draw my kitchen. Alright now to draw your kitchen basically all your cabinets live in this library which is down the left hand side now the easiest way to look at that library is to go up to this option called type select you press that it comes up with this select product style box in this box basically is where all your cabinets live base units, wall units, tall units, semi tall units as well as objects like sinks and handles and taps and so forth so I'm going to start off with a tall unit in the tool unit I want to start with a filler so I'll go find my filler Let's just click through to the next pages till you find your filler there's my filler panel I go OK I want to change my filler from that to 40 mil the depth is 600 and the height is 2250 ok automatically sets it 150 off the floor and we go layer place that there, bring it over and place it against that wall and just go no for that option now. Okay from there what I want to do is uh, then add a pantry so we go type select we go through to my next page there's my double door pantry we go OK. Here what I do is I'll change the size of it to 800 the depth of it to 600 and the height to 2250. Press layout bring that out onto the drawing, drag it to where it needs to go when you see there's a blue line touching to the next cabinet to the cabinet that you've already put there it, it is in position and you just click on the mouse and it, that's your next cabinet from there you go to your library again and we select a range hood sorry a wall oven tower so I'll select that one we go OK from now I just want to change the depth of it so it's 600 it's 2250 high and we press layout bring the cabinet out onto my drawing and place it to the next one okay from that section there what I want to do is I want to add an end panel so we go to end panel select decorative panel and go OK change the width to 16 mil change the depth to 600 and change the height to 20 2400 because I want this to go to the floor and we're just going to put that at zero press layout place that there okay from that side there I want to go to the opposite side now so I'm going to go up to my wall units I do want to go to a wall unit double click OK the opening size of this is 950 the depth is 350 and the height is 640 it's going to go at an elevation of 1760 off the floor be a fridge space 1760 press layout bring the cabinet over butt it to the wall what I do then is I'll move that I want to move it out 250 and I want to move it to the left 40 mil okay then we go okay whoops I actually went the wrong way so we're going to go in 500 this time that's bring it brought it forward now so that should be flush to the wall gives me a 40 mil down the side what I'll do from there is I'll go type select wall unit I want an end uh, filler panel go to filler go OK go f change that to 40 keep it at 350 640 high and I want it at 1760 off the floor press layout, drag it there and butt it into and just go no so there's my filler for there so on that side there what I want to do now is put another end panel and run it to the floor so we go to tool units end panel, decorative panel we go OK change the width to 16 change the depth to 600 change the height to 2400 
and we just want to go on the floor at zero. Okay, lay it and place that there. So that's flush to there. Then that gives me an opening. So now I've got a 2538 opening in between those two panels. So in between there, I'm going to put some base cabinets. So we go to type select, go to base unit, go to three drawers. Okay, so I'm just going to use this three drawer option. So it's a 180 fixed top drawer. Size is 846. Depth is 580. Height is 720. Press layout. Place it there. Then I'm going to copy that cabinet. So right click, copy, and place that there. Then I'm going to copy that cabinet. So right click, copy and place that there. So three cabinets, all the same size. Okay, so now above those cabinets, I'm going to place some overhead cupboards. So we're gonna go to wall unit, gonna to go to the next page, I'm gonna use an aluminium frame glass doors. So we select that, we go okay. The width of these are 800, the depth is 350, the height is 840. Elevation is 1560 off the floor. Press layout, bring my first cabinet up, place it to there. Okay, then I'm just going to copy that cabinet, go copy, and place that there. So from there, what I'm going to do is put an end panel on each of those cabinets. So we go to overhead end panels, select decorative panel, and go OK. The width is 16, the depth is 350, 840 high is the height of the panel. 1560 off the floor, but that one there. So then I'm just going to copy that, go copy, and place that on the end there. So now those two panels are matching. Alright, so we've got 906 left in the middle. So in the middle of that, what I'm going to do is put a canopy. So we're going to go type select, going to go extractor, going to go find my canopy that I like. So select through the first few pages, you'll come into where the canopies are, and we'll use this one. Go OK, go layout place that straight there okay so then from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bulkhead across the top of all those cabinets so I'm going to go up to line going to create ceiling filler going to select units to create ceiling filler so I select the first one I hold the shift button down select the next one select the next one select the panel select that cabinet select that end panel select that filler Select that one, that one, and that one. Go right click. This is going to go to the ceiling so that it automatically matches to the ceiling height that we set up. I'm going to change this so it comes in 30 millimeters from the front and 16 mil in from the sides. Okay, and then we just go OK. Now you can see across the top there, it's all set up as a bulkhead. So those bulkheads are all sitting in from the face of the doors and in from my end panels. Okay, so from that option there, what I'm going to do now is create the um, island section of my kitchen. So I'm going to change my view on that, so I'll just move it out a bit. I go up to view, I go to top view. This will change where it looks, so now you can see I'm looking down on the top section of my cupboards. So I want to find my first cabinet, so I'll go to my library. Go to base units. I want you to use a three, three drawer box again. Just an equal drawer in this one, and we go OK. Now the width of my cabinet on this one is 800. The depth on this one is 580, and the height is 720. Press layout. We bring it out onto my drawing. What you can see now is that it actually brings a measurement with you, and it's also facing the cabinet the opposite way. So to make the cabinet face the way that I want it to go, I want to press my space bar. Okay, so now I move my cabinet to where I want it to be as close as possible. And I'll leave it into position. Now what I can do is I can actually check the position of where that cabinet sits. So I go right click, go position query, and I can say... distance to wall, select my wall, and it tells me that I am 
1324 between wall and face of those doors so by the time the bench goes on I will be 1300 so I might want to move that in say 200 okay so to do that I can just click on it go move and I want to go on the in direction and I want to go 200 mil alright so that's going to go okay so now I should have a clear measurement of 1120 in between so I can check that again by going position query distance to wall 1124 so by the time the bench cuts on there it'll be 1100 gap between cupboards okay what we'll do then is I will then go exit from there we can now start placing our other cabinets so what we do is we go back to our original view which is our 3D view so you press the world over the top there and what that does it takes you back to this view here so from here what I'm going to do is press type select and I'm going to create a dishwasher space decorative panel go OK press 16 mil 580 deep 720 high we we'll press layout bring that over and place that onto the cupboard there my next one I'm going to do is now it's going to put a filler above my dishwasher this helps me with my bench top when I go to fill it later 20 mil and it's 850 off the floor okay whoops press escape width is 610 press layout and go there so from there I'm going to copy that panel and place it on the end of here now you can see I've created a dishwasher space from there I press type select what I'm going to do now is put in a sink cupboard so I just want a two door sink cupboard press the end panel press that go OK so the width of my cabinet is 800 the depth is 580 the height is 720 we we'll press layout and place that there alright so from there what I want to do is I just want to copy that cupboard so we go copy and place it on the end oops we go copy place that there then I just want to copy that one there again copy and place that there so there's the basis of our cupboards so what I want to do now is place a bar back on that cabinet so we go to base units end panel decorative panel go OK the width is 1600 is 1921 the depth is 16 and the height is 870 I want to put that on the floor let me just press layout place that there get yourself into a position right click onto that and we just want to move it into the first position so I want to go to the left 1921 and I want to come out 16 mil and we go OK. So that places the first one into position. And now I'm just going to copy that and place it on the end. I've built it into two because it's such a large bar back, so it needs to be two panels. OK, from there, what we can do now is um, we have an added feature which is called automatically install bench tops. This is um, where the settings that we set up at the start um, come in handy up the top corner here you'll see that's an auto install worktop button we press that once we press that the bench tops will then go on top of your kitchen they'll go on top of the kitchen the thickness we set up the color we set up with also the overhangs that we set up from there I want to continue editing the bench top to create a breakfast bar on the right hand side so I'll go up to worktop I go edit worktop I'll select the edge that I want to edit so it comes up with this you'll see there's a blueprint of the kitchen underneath I want to look at that sign there so that is edge 0 to 3 so we click on that edge go right click go side move out I want to go 2 6 and then we go OK once you've done that you go OK it takes you through to a section where it tells you that's the size of the bench then we go OK and you can see now get yourself into a good 
view of it we've created an overhang there from there what I want to do now is create a waterfall end on both ends of that cupboard so we're going to go water worktop again create side worktop select the edge the width is there so the width I want to put at 40 sorry 24 the thickness is 40 the real thickness is 40 and it's going to go to the floor but as you can see there's our waterfall end okay you can sort of see that looks a bit blotchy the easiest way to get up to that is just go to render go to fit map select the edge go right click and go okay so now it's all in one what I want to do now is go to the opposite end and I want to do the same on that section there so we go to worktop create side worktop select my edge go OK OK then I want to do the same with that I want to go to render just go to fit map select that go right click we go OK right so now we are starting to get the bases of a kitchen you can see from there we've got our island bench um, what I'm going to do now is um, still going to put in the kickers so we have, that is an option with the kickers the same as what we have with the benches there's an automatically install next tour to it so we go auto install plinth select that and that'll automatically install the bench sorry the kickers at the color and the dimensions we set up if it doesn't all of it do it you just go to line create plinth select units select that one and go right click and there it goes it fills it up okay you can see all the way down point into there I'll put kickers all the way through there and you can point through there I'll put kicker faces all through there all right so from that point what we do now is we'll add some appliances so I want to add an oven in there first so we're going to go up to search type going to go to oven I'm just going to select an oven so just this melee one will be fine we go OK and what I've done here basically I know that opening is already 600 so I'm just going to go auto fit the size so we go layout select the bottom of that and then select that and that automatically puts the bent this the, the oven in at what where it needs to be from there what I'm going to do is um, place in a hot plate so we go type select go to hob just go to all of them just you can see there's quite a few different ones in the system quite an extensive range something that you want we can just go to five hobs gives you large options or we'll just use this melee one here we go OK size is correct I want to basically place it in the bench top by the unit so by that cabinet there and we press layout OK press that that puts it there it is the blue line is the hot plate, the yellow line is the cupboard underneath and then we just go OK. There is our hot plate. OK. Now you can double check that that's um, directly in the centre of that one by clicking on the hot plate and go align to that. Just go left, middle, left middle we we'll just go okay so now that whole plate is directly above that okay so from there what I'm going to do now is add a sink so I want to get in a good sort of view of my sink cabinet which is just there I'm gonna go up to type select I'm gonna go to sink what I'm gonna do here is just go double bowl I'm gonna place an undermount sink I'm gonna use this one here we go okay 
the width in my sink so I'm just going to change that to 800 press layout press the cupboard that I want it to go on to the sink is larger than the unit the work may not be created the worktop may not be created correctly just go yes because I know it will and basically again you see the blue line is the sink and the yellow line is the cabinet okay and we just go okay I want to sink over the worktop I, I know I don't I want to go under so I want to go under worktop so we go okay we go okay so there you see there that puts the sink there all I want to do now is just move that up I just want to go up 20 mil because I want it just to sit down from the top of the stone 20 mil and we go okay so there's our first sink we go exit okay so from that point there what we're going to do is we're going to add our tap so we go type select we go to tap just go through we'll pick a tap so we'll just use this one and we go okay all right the height of the tap we're going to go on worktop and we just press layout what we do then is we just press the spacebar so the tap is turning around and I'll get that to the middle by placing okay so there's our tap in the stone right so my next appliance is I'm going to add a fridge so we go over to our fridge cavity okay I go up to type select go over to fridge unit select the fridge that I want I want to put it in a double door fridge unit so we select that one there and we go OK to keep the width at 900 and press layout OK that's going to place that straight there As you can see, the ca that's in the middle of that um, cavity now. Okay. So from there, what I want to do also from then is we go from back to point this direction here, and I'm going to place in a dishwasher just there. So we go to type select. We go to wash dish. They call it. We'll grab a brushed aluminium one. We go okay. Press layout. Okay, so now this is where I'm going to use my filler. So I'm going to click on that, go align to my filler. So I want the front and front to meet, and I want the left to meet the middle and middle there we go okay so now that places that in there Now you can also change the size just to make it sort of look a bit better so I'm just gonna go 850 okay so there's our dishwasher is placed in from there what we'll do is we will start adding um, X more accessories so go in and change the floor so I can click on the floor going to change the floor to a timber material so go from carpet to solid timber I'm going to use Tasmanian oak we go OK alright I just need to render that so we go to render fit map select go right click I want to change it so the direction of the grain is running along the wall and just going to change the different laminations so that's three we just go 1.5 so now that looks like real timber from there what I'll do is I will start adding some um, other options so like some chairs so we're going to go to um, other in other we go to dining products go to the uh, next page next page next page you can see there's quite an extensive range of dining products go through until your chairs come through in there you'll start seeing some um, high stools Once you get to the area, we'll start putting them in. So I'll use these white ones. We go OK. When that comes up, you also should say yes. 
so from now I just want to press layout bring the store out place it at the back turn it around using my spacebar sort of placing it so it looks like it's been lived in okay then we're going to go layout again we're going to place three or four across the back here place that one there okay then from there I'm going to place another one as well and there okay we could also add other objects t to the benches so I'm going to go through and show you where there's some more objects in the system kitchen products um, you can put um, pots and pans on the stoves you can put objects on the benches uh, knife block so I can put a knife block over on the surface just next to there so just place that there as well as that I can also um, while I'm there I'm going to add a splashback so we go type select I want to go to um, I'm basically going to use a wall unit overhead panel. We're going to turn a panel into a splashback. So we go to end panel, go to decorative panel. We go OK. I just want to change the width to 600 at the moment. The depth, we're just going to put it at 6 mil. The height, I want to put it at 650. And I want to come off the floor, 910. Press layout, bring it up place it there okay so then I'm going to go right click and I'm going to extend it to there then I'm going to go get a better angle I'm just going to go right click there and I'm going to extend that to there so there's my splashback so what I'll do now is I'm going to go in and change the color of that splashback okay So from there what I'm going to do now is change the uh, colour of the splashback so it's something nice and bright so you can see it. So what I'll do is I'll click on this button up here which is Material Editor. So I'll click on that. Okay, go to Colour. Select Melamine. Go uh, Browse. Basically go to where I've saved some JPEGs on my system. To the desktop. Click in there, I want a nice bright yellow colour, and we go open, we go OK. OK, once we've done that, then we go OK. So I've got a nice bright yellow splashback. OK, so from there what I can do now is just add some more objects um, to the um, benches. So we select over here. I can put in some uh, pictures on the walls over here. So go type select, go to other, I want to go to uh, accessories and decor products, go to new page, next page, next page, next page. So on there, I might go back to that one and add that onto the bench. Just place that there. Okay, then I'm going to go back into there. Wall pictures. And I'm going to add a picture. Okay, so I just want to use that one. Press layout. Basically, place that up on the wall. Okay, you can point at that direction. I can also change the size of that if I wanted to. So I can make that, um, say, 700. And 
go okay. So it makes it a bit higher. I'll just add some more products using our menu. So I'm just going to click through my menu bars. Might just add um, some pots and pans and some uh, dishes. So I'll just grab this dish box. Go OK, press layout, drag it, put it up where I would like to place it, just near the sink area. Just there. You can also add other objects. I'm going to add another object to the back section of the wall. So just go through my pages. As you can see, there's quite an extensive range. Click through just going to add a bit of a decorative thing to the right hand side of the hot plate. I'll just add the tea set. We go OK. Press layout, grab it, and place it and put it on the bench. OK. What I'm going to do there is I'm going down to my navigation bar down the bottom, point into that direction, and in that section there I'm going to add a table and chairs. So we go to type select go to dining products select tables so go to my end page as you can see there's quite an extensive range I'm going to go back to my first page and just use this table and chairs we go OK from there what I'm just going to do is press layout and place that on the floor in front of that sliding door. Okay. And you can continue more objects to make it um, more customized to suit the customer. Once you've added all your objects, what we do then is um, we start the next process of um, rendering the product. From there, what we do is we turn on the lights. So we press this button here. What this does, this is start the ray tracing. Ray tracing basically is going to go over and over the drawing quite a number of times and it enhances the product. So you'll start seeing now that all the lights will turn on. All the um, gloss levels of the room will change. The flooring will change. You'll see chrome levels in the legs on the chairs. Basically everything's just going to pop out of the page. I'll let that trace. That usually ray traces for about 200 times and the process usually takes about uh, two to three minutes. Continue on.
getting up to ray tracing of 200 now once it gets to the 200 mark it will automatically stop and what you do from there it's just like taking a shot with uh, your standard camera or your, your mobile phone um, you can navigate around the room point to yourself to any direction you require so maybe I want a shot from there so get a bit of the table into it and what we do is we press this button here which is the camera called save image press that go high quality effect and what that does that'll take a snapshot as you can see come down the bottom here press save the image and that'll save it to the folder that you've created to save your job into and we go save picture is saved then you then go again to anywhere on the drawing down the bottom here I might want to take a nice little picture of that. Take snapshot, go high quality effect. And press save. And again, continue to make some more snapshots. I'll do it on that side there. and save and I'll take one more facing this way just so you can see sort of down in the gully of the kitchen Once you've taken all your snapshots, what we do then is we turn the lights back off again, go yes, and we continue on with the next process. The next process is now to produce a quote. The quote will basically quote everything that is on this page. To create a quote, you press this button here which is auto quotation. What the auto quotation will do is uh, quote everything that's on the page. So we go OK for the first one go OK for the second one it comes up to this one this is going to do it in the currency of Australian dollars we've got some prices added into there just as samples it's going to include all the hardware and then we go OK from there what we do is um, we ex export it to an Excel spreadsheet so we go export we go no because I want to have more than the total price as you can see it'll automatically open up Excel and it will produce a quote with all the information from the previous drawing added into here okay now you can save that to your job I'm just going to cancel basically the first section up the top is where all your cabinets are so it's all your base units, wall units, all the cabinets that are in the job so there's the aluminium door frames there's all your handles basically everything's been priced there's your subtotals there's your worktop been priced up as well and then there's all your accessories so you basically in here will be anything so as you can see it's it's pricing all the items on there like chairs bottles everything you can remove those but um and add your hardware so like all your draw runners and hinges and things down the bottom it gives you a uh, total price okay from there we then exit out of that i'm just not going to save it go back to the drawing from there what we do in our drawing is we want to produce some 2d images the 2D images, we create them by pressing this button here. I'm going to produce a plan drawing, I'm going to produce an elevation drawing, a worktop drawing, and also a wireframe drawing. We go OK. This will open up BTOCAD. BTOCAD comes with the program. And 
I'll open up and start a couple of times because it's got a couple of objects to produce. There we go OK. There we go. As you can see, it's um, generated all the images, including a uh, perspective of where the cabinet kitchen was sitting in um, your last aspect view. What I want to do is that that title block comes with it. We, t we delete that. Go delete. We can move these objects around. Click on your move. Drag them so that they're nice and neat. Want to zoom in on that one. Basically with this you can add um, writing on it so that you can tell what the um, where, where the edges are seen. So we use our title name section down the bottom here. Draw a little box. Comes up with this. Change that to 85 so it's nice. And then bring this up to, so I want to put scene. and then go OK. Drag that to the middle. Then we're going to go right click. We're going to copy. And we're going to paste it there. And paste it there. And paste it there. And paste it there. Okay, so basically that's just the bench top is giving you where the um, cutouts are for your hot plates. You can also add measurements on there. Um, you can add extra text if you like. Drag that to the middle. Put it there. So what you can see now are your different views. So each view has all the information required. So there's all your sizes, all your cabinet numbers everything that you need to manufacture your drawings. There's your front elevation for your, uh, your island bench and your front elevation for your A view which uh, A view basically you'll see here that's your A view and there's your B view and there's your floor plan. Okay from there just move that sort of back a little bit so it's in the center. What I'm going to do then is we're going to use our templates which we use here in our tab layouts. Double click into the center of that. Activate it. Bring all your drawings in. Drag it to the center. Zoom it out so it's in the middle. Double click. And there's your drawing. Down the side here we have options to fit all your jobs information so you can put in your handle types. Anything you want. The color of everything. All the job information and so forth. Right, double click on there, brings it back to the center and then we just print it out. So we go plot, find your printer, I'm just going to do it as an, 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 a, a PDF, change the size, I want to put it as an A3 page so it's nice and large, press extents, preview, fit to paper, and that's what it's going to print. From there we can go to our next tabs and just in this tab we want to put individual drawings. So the drawings are nice and large for you guys on the floor to read. So we just grab that one there, put that into the middle. That one there will be printed out on that page. Then we go to this one, zoom it in, zoom it into your next one, drag it into the middle. That'll be printed out on that page. Do a, a, a plan view by itself so that you can see it just like that and it can be printed on that page basically just like that what we do then is that the um, KD Max part is finished from here onwards what we want to do is import these pictures and um, drawings into our WoodCam program to generate our cutting lists and CNC information